Question 1. Changdok Palace. Changdok Palace was built in 1405 by King Taejong and was originally intended to be used in emergencies or when the king wanted time away from the main palace, Gyeongbokgung. However, during the early years of the Joseon dynasty, most kings preferred Changdok to the main palace as Gyeongbok was hunted by memories of a bloody past. During a Japanese invasion in 1592 to 1598, all of Seoul's palaces were destroyed. When returning to Seoul, King Gwanghae Gun rebuilt Tanduk Palace, while the old main palace was left in ruins for over 270 years. Tanduk Gun means the Palace of Illustrious Virtue, and its design followed the Korean style of harmonizing with nature instead of the traditional Chinese oriented style of symmetrical arrangements. The palace we see today looks very different from the original. The size has been reduced and distorted due to deliberate destruction under Japanese rule during the early 20th century. However, the palace still follows the basic geomantic principle of an ideal home with a mountain at the back and water in the front, while the same thing following the three major rules of palace construction and placement. Question 2. The Sokgurang Grotto is part of the Bulguksa Temple complex located in Gyeongju, the formal capital of the Shila Kingdom which existed from 57 BCE to 935. The grotto is near the summit of Mount Toam, 565 meters above sea level and overlooking the East Sea in the distance. Sokgurang was originally constructed in 751 and completed in 774. Most ancient cave temples in Asia are built in naturally occurring caves or are dug into the hillside. However, Sokgurang Grotto was built using granite blocks to form the chambers, which were then covered in earth. The interior of the grotto consists of a rectangular chamber leading to the main dome-shaped chamber, representing the ancient view that heaven was round and earth was square. Inside the main chamber is a Buddhist sculpture of Sakamuni achieving enlightenment. Surrounding the Buddha is a breathtaking scene of other sculptures and decorations. The original construction techniques created a preserved environment, helping the sculptures last for many years. However, the Grotto Shrine is still a great demonstration of Korea's traditional Buddhist art and sculptures. Unfortunately, 20th century interference and efforts to preserve the monument hindered the years of self-preservation and now are artificially preserved. Question 3. Heinza Temple, Dangyeom Panjon, the depositories for the Chupitaka Koreana woodblocks. Heinza Temple is one of the most famous sites in Korea because it is home to the Korean Buddhist canon, the Chupitaka Koreana. The Chupitaka Koreana is a collection of 81,258 wooden printing blocks that were carved and conditioned for over 15 years and completed in 1251. It is the world's most comprehensive and oldest intact Buddhist kanon in Handa script. It was created in hopes of receiving the blessings of the Buddha to defend the Korean peninsula from being taken over by the Mongols. The kanon is kept in the highest point of the temple, taking advantage of the terrain and incredible building techniques and remaining well preserved. The design of the buildings ensures humidity and temperature change is kept out even during extreme seasonal changes and monsoons. It is unbelievable that the printing blocks are in almost perfect condition after over 700 years of existence. Question 4. Baekje Historic Areas Baekje was one of the longest standing kingdoms in the Korean peninsula, surviving from 18 BCE to 660 CE in the mountainous Midwest region in Korea. There are eight main archaeological sites associated with the Baekje Kingdom. They demonstrate the relationship, architectural developments, and spread of Buddhism between the ancient kingdoms of Korea, China, and Japan from the 5th to the 7th century. These are the Gongsang Song Fortress and Royal Tombs at Songsanri and Gongju, the Buso San Song Fortress and Gyeongbukri Administrative Buildings, the Jong Nimsa Temple, the Royal Tombs in Lungsangri and the Nasong City Wall in Buyo, and the Royal Palace at Wanggungri and the Miruksa Temple in Iksan. This collection of Buddhist temples, ancient tombs, stone pagodas, and architecture demonstrate the culture, religion, and aesthetics of the ancient kingdom of Baekje. Question 5. Hwasong Fortress Hwasong Fortress in Suwon was built in 1796 under the watchful eye of King Dongjo. 
This was not just another one of Korea's many fortresses, but it was King Dongdo's memorial in loving memory of his father. King Dongdo's father, Crown Prince Sado, had been executed at the age 27 by his own father, King Yongdo, when King Dongdo, previously Prince Dongdo, was only 10 years old. The true circumstances surrounding his father's execution is often debated, but it's safe to say that King Dongdo felt a strong determination to restore his honor. During King Dongdo's reign, it was decided that a new city and defense needed to be constructed to the south of Seoul. So, seeing a chance to restore his father's honor, King Zhongzhou moved his father's tomb to Mount Hua, south of Suan, and began the huge task of building a massive city fortress, complete with an emergency palace. The care and devotion put into the project by the king is evident from the sheer beauty and elegance of the fortifications. Remarkably, the construction only took two years, likely due to the king's constant attention. Question 6. Royal Tombs of the Joseon Dynasty The kingdom of Joseon was heavily influenced by the teachings of Confucius. At the heart of these teachings is respect for distant ancestors. Many people considered themselves part of a continuous spiritual bloodline connecting their ancestors with their future children. Ancestors were considered to still exist on a spiritual plane and deserved attention from the living. With this in mind, Koreans placed great emphasis on choosing favorable burial sites and carried out rituals in hope that their ancestors would reward their living descendants. There are 42 Joseon royal tombs and 40 of them are in Seoul, South Korea or surrounding areas. They also have to be at least 4 kilometers away from the capital but not more than 40 kilometers and they should be in sacred places far from human activities. Landscape should have a hill that meets flatland and is facing towards water. The sites for these royal tombs were chosen carefully based upon their natural surroundings. Question 7. Nam Han Sang-sung Nam Han Sang-sung was built as an emergency fortress capital during the 17th century and was continuously occupied and developed for 300 years. The site was originally a smaller Chuang Song fortress, which was then transformed into the large Nam Han Song fortress in preparation for an expected invasion by the Chinese Manchu Qing dynasty. It was designed to shelter not only the nobility, but also the common people during the attack. The fortress was built using the mountainous terrain 25 kilometers southeast from Seoul and 500 meters above sea level. The layout of the fortress was inspired by traditional East Asian construction from the Chinese Zhao dynasty. It made the best use of the naturally steep terrain and high plateau. The walls have gun bastions and use special gray bricks intended for shock absorption from cannon attacks. Question 8. Dongmyo Shrine Two years after the founding of the Joseon dynasty, King Taejo moved the capital to present-day Seoul. Upon deciding the location of this new city, he ordered the construction of his palace and two other key facilities. The facilities were as sacred and as important as the palace itself, with one built for the gods of the land and crops and the other as the royal ancestral shrine Dongmyo. The royal ancestral shrine held the spirit tablets of former members of the royal family and numerous ceremonies were held in honor of these ancestors. Dongmyo is composed of two halls, the main hall, which keeps 49 royal spirit tablets, and the hall of eternal peace, which keeps 34. The main hall is for those who gained great respect, and the hall of eternal peace is for those who didn't but are still honored. There were also two kings who were overthrown during their reign due to misrule and so were not given the honor of being held in a great shrine. The immense respect given to this ancestral shrine is evident in its unique architecture, displaying dignity and elegance worthy of its role as the spiritual heart of the Joseon dynasty. Question 9. Historic Villages of Korea, Ha Hui and Yangdong in Joseon Dynasty, clans from the noble families were encouraged to settle in villages in the countryside and live life according to Confucian ideals. The sites chosen for these villages were selected based on natural surroundings and so were often in extremely beautiful locations near rivers and mountains. The ruling family then brought in many of their relatives, developed these communities, and then gained influence via education and acceptance into government positions. Some of these families produced many influential members and became known as elite clan villages. One of the best of these elite clan villages still surviving today is Ha Hui, 
which is nestled in the bend of a river next to a small mountain. The village has maintained its elite clan structure with clan shrines, Confucian academies, and an untamed natural environment. Another famous village is Yangdong, which instead of being built by a low-lying river like Hahui, it is nestled in the ridges of Mount Soltang, 161 meters above sea level. But it is still surrounded by a breathtaking landscape. There is a ginkgo tree, which is over 500 years old, as well as an ancient architecture, including the remains of houses, which survived the Japanese invasion of 1592 to 1598. Question 10. Gotang, Hwasun, Kanghan, Domen sites. Built in the Bronze Age, Domen's or Goindo in Korean are monuments made of big pieces of stone arranged to form chambers. Although these monuments can be found around the world in small numbers, Korea has by far the largest collection with over 30,000 in South Korea and up to 15,000 in North Korea. It is assumed that these dolmens were used as burial sites. Thanks to the artifacts and human remains found at these locations, we can gain a wonderful glimpse into Korea's past. There are two main types of dolmen in Korea, one style dominating the north of the peninsula and the other the south. Gochang County in North Dola Province is said to be the densest dolmen cluster in the world, with over 447 discovered so far over a 1.8 kilometer stretch of mountains. The site is also interesting as it contains examples of two main types of dolmen in Korea. In the most southern part, the northern style of dolmen can be seen. The large collection of dolmens in Hwasun County in South Tola Province were discovered recently in 1995, buried under bushes, but well-preserved. There are a total of 597 dolmens over a stretch of around 5 kilometers along a valley that include examples of different styles of dolmens. One includes a dolmen named Stone Hurling Rock, which was one of the largest dolmens in the world, estimated to weigh about 280 tons. The Kangwa County site in the Incheon metropolitan area contains a total of 127 dolmens scattered around the northern base of Mount Goryeo. Question 11. Jeju Volcanic Island and Lava Tubes Jeju Island was formed by volcanic activity over 250 years ago. The two best examples of the volcanic landforms on the island are Mount Hala and Lava Tubes, which were formed by explosive eruptions of the Baosilic Sea. The two best examples of the volcanic landforms on the island are Mount Hala and lava tubes which were formed by explosive eruptions of basaltic lava. Both of these formations are not only beautiful, but are highly necessary for research into the geological history of the earth. Jeju Island is an oval-shaped piece of land 70 kilometers from east to west and 30 kilometers north to south. The entire island is around three times the size of Korea's capital city, Seoul. Mount Hala is at the center of the island with its gentle slopes and lake-filled crater at the summit. The mountain is a habitat for a wide variety of plant life ranging from subtropical plants at its base to temperate and polar species higher up. With the mountain dominating the ground above, the lava tubes can be seen underground. There are 20 or more of these lava tubes under Jeju Island with various lengths, structures, and states of erosion. These tubes are cave-like structures which formed around flowing lava before being drained and leaving a hollow center. Question 1. Can you list national treasure number 1 to number 3? Namdaemun, Sungreemun. One of the major gates in Seoul is Namdaemun. It is the oldest gate and the first national treasure of South Korea. Namdaemun is also called Sungreemun. This gate was to greet important foreign emissaries and controlled what came in and out of the city walls. They started building Moon in 1395 during the reign of King Taejo. King Taejo wanted to build a wall to protect the city and needed a main gate to control everything. Building the gate took about three years. Moon was rebuilt again, but this time it was by King Sejong the Great. Then, during the Korean War, Namdaemun was destroyed by the Japanese and was in horrible shape. It was later restored to its original glory. In February 2008, there was a big fire that gravely damaged Namdaemun Gate. The fire was started by a man who was very angry about his life. Many people were very upset. 
The government started to restore Namdimun after the incident, and it took about three years to complete. Now, Namdimun is back with a new and different style, but still many people come to see the gate. Wungaksa Pagoda Wungaksa Pagoda is the second national treasure of Korea. Wungaksa Pagoda is a very tall pagoda that stands 10 stories high. It was supposed to be part of the Wungguksa Temple. Now, it is located in Tapgur Park, Pagoda Park. Wungguksa Pagoda is now located in the former location of Wungguksa Temple. This pagoda is considered to be one of the greatest art designs during the Joseon Dynasty, so they wanted to protect it by putting glass around it since it was turned into a park. This pagoda is made out of marble, but it looks like it was made from wood. As you look at its shape from each story, it has many kinds of designs and pictures such as pictures of dragons, tigers, lotus flowers, and other special and unique images. Bukhansan Monument Bukhansan Monument became the third national treasure of Korea. On Bukhan Mountain, the monument was created from the stone on Bibong Peak. For this reason, it was moved to Gyeongbukgung Palace to take care of it. Later, it was moved to the National Museum of Korea. In search of new borders, Shila King Jin Hung was happy to expand his territory to the Han River. The writing mentions how the monument was made and explains the achievements of King Jin Hung. The exact date of the monument's creation is not mentioned because it was so hard to read the words that rusted away from bad weather. But it is old enough that it could have been made around 561 CE or 568 CE. Question 2. Can you list treasure number 1 to number 3? Hunging Timun Dongdaemun. Hunging Timun is another name for Dongdaemun. Dongdaemun is another famous gate that surrounded Seoul during King Taejo's reign during the Joseon dynasty. It was called the Great East Gate. It was built in 1398 and was changed again in 1453. This gate also had an extra wall called Ongsong to protect the weak side of the wall from any enemies that climbed over. Because the gate had been through a lot of weather like rain, snow, and wind, the roof was damaged. They wanted to do repairs to preserve the gate and the roof. Dongdae Moon is also known for its famous market. People all over the world come to enjoy shopping there. It is also famous for having the Dongdae Moon Design Plaza for people to shop and enjoy the atmosphere. This place is the hub for fashion design and it is a popular tourist attraction because it is exciting. Bronze Bell of Boshingak Tower Boshingak Bell, located in Seoul, has been standing since 1395 and is one of the few famous bells that is still around. This bell has a special name called Bell Street since it is on Dongno Street. This bell was designated as Boshingak by Emperor Gojong in 1895. This bell was very special in the town because this helped let people know that they will be closing and opening the four main gates. They let people know of any fire that was around the area by using it as an alarm. Nowadays, the bell is used on New Year's Eve to celebrate the New Year's, but it is not used much since there are many people in Seoul. Korea Seoul Tapgo Park Wongaksa Monument Tapgo Park is a public park that was once the site of Wongaksa Buddhist Temple in the 15th century. In 1471, one monument of Wongaksa was erected with writing on the front and back of the stone. There are some designs that can be seen at the base, like the turtle, which is made of granite. At the top is a turtle design made of marble. This park also had some historical moments on March 1st, 1919, when Korean independence movement was held for the proclamation of independence. This park area is now more popular as a resting place among elders. Question 3. Do you know the number one scenic location in Korea? I will tell you about the number one scenic location called Myeongsu. Seogun Mountain was originally called Tonghak Mountain. This mountain is famous for its beautiful landscape. Yeolgok one of the greatest scholars in Korea, changed the name of Sogum River. 129 wild species of plants, including pine trees and oriental oak trees, grow in this area. Animals like the mountain goat, which is nearly extinct, are also living there. Renowned for its beautiful natural landscape, Sogumgang Mountain forms part of Odesan National Park. Question 4. What is the historical landmark number one in Korea? 
The first historical landmark is called Sajo. Historical spot number one in Korea is Pusokjong in Gyeongju. It was built during the Unified Chila period. The only thing you can see now is a granite made waterway feature. This place was built for entertainment and parties for the kings and aristocrats. They enjoyed having parties and used to hold big events there too. It is said that the canal was used for a drinking game. They floated cups that have alcohol in it on streaming canals, and when the cup stops at one person, that person would have to drink right away and make a poem. If you see the 22 meter long canal, it has so many curves and shapes that no one could predict where the cup would stop. I think people in that period also like to drink and enjoy together. Question 1. What does CIQ stand for? Tell me about it. Also, could you give an explanation about cruise tour in Korea? CIQ stands for Customs, Immigration, and Quarantine. Three procedures must be carried out when you enter or leave a seaport or an airport. Customs is about imposing tariffs to control and inspect the flow of goods that go into or out of a country. Immigration is to confirm one's identity, visa, and purpose of visit to decide entry or exit. Quarantine is performed to conduct inspection for preventing disease from insects and microorganisms that could harm ecosystems in that country. Cruise tour is a travel business where travelers use cruise as their main transportation. Korea is very close to China, Japan, and Russia, so cruise tours are very convenient when going from harbor to harbor. In Korea, Jeju and Busan have ports for cruise ships, while Incheon and Sokto have ports under construction. It was reported that 20% of Jeju travelers come by cruise ship, so cruise tours can definitely contribute to the growth of the tourism industry. One concern about cruise tours is that Korean tour programs are focused on shopping. Cruise tours allows travelers to stay in one spot for a short period of time, and most schedules are packed with shopping. I think Korea needs to develop tour programs that has less focus on shopping for cruise travelers. Question 2. Do you know about MICE? What does it stand for? MICE stands for Meeting, Incentive, Conference, and Exhibition. It is a combination of tourism and international conference. Since all four are related to the tourism industry, MICE industry is considered to be a high-value business. For example, successful conference meetings brings a large amount of economic and social profit and can be a great way of building a positive national brand. For example, successful conference meetings brings a large amount of economic and social profit and can be a great way of building a positive nation brand. To host various conferences from all over the world, we are building MICE convention centers in many areas. Major convention centers are Exco in Daegu, Bexco in Busan, ICC Jeju and Jeju, Kintex in Ilsan, Sekko in Tangwon, and DCC in Daejeon. Question 3. Could you explain the term SIT and FIT? SIT stands for Special Interest Travel. SIT has a special purpose or theme for those who are specifically interested in a theme. To list several examples of SIT tour, I would mention cruise, winery, eco, coffee, culture, art, architecture, and healing tours. Each tour has its own distinctive content. Through SIT tour, travelers desire to get meaningful and unforgettable experiences. These days, many people seek to try new and interesting experiences. Because of this, SIT tours are becoming popular. To conduct the perfect SIT tour, a tour guide is required to have a professional knowledge about that special theme. One example of SIT is when the Jeju Tourism Organization invited bicycle community members from Vietnam to Jeju and conducted a special interest tour. One of the participants said Jeju's bike roads are excellent for bike riders and its landscape is wonderful enough to catch tourist hearts. FIT stands for Foreign Independent Travel. There are no fixed schedules or location for this tour since it is totally made to fit the traveler. During FIT, travelers enjoy whatever they want without tour guides. FIT is getting more popular these days because there is an abundance of content and information on the internet and social media. Question 4. What's the difference between tourism and travel? First, let's take a look at the exact definition of the two terms from the dictionary. Tourism is the business of providing services for people of touring. For example, it provides accommodations, transportation, hotels, restaurants, and trips. 
Travel refers to the activity of going on a long journey. For example, if you are going to the market to buy some vegetables, you don't call it traveling. But if you are going on a two-week business conference, you can say that you are traveling. Tourism also refers to travel, but it includes commercial things. For example, tourism deals with general things like accommodations and transportation. Tourism is travel for pleasure and the business of attracting, accommodating, entertaining tourists and operating tours. Tourism is significant as it brings a large amount of income into the Korean economy. Question 5. Could you tell us about Binakia and Korea Stay? Binakia stands for Best Night in Korea. It is a Korean business hotel brand run by the Korean Tourism Organization. There are more than 50 hotel chains, both local and overseas. To reserve a room, you can visit their website, www.benakia.com. Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism, supported by KTO, is working to promote Benakia to provide the best and most comfortable accommodations for local and foreign travelers. The room price is reasonable, and its location makes various tourist attractions accessible. Korea Stay is a homestay program that is certified by KTO, which offers selected homestay accommodations for international visitors. They have special opportunities to experience Korean culture with locals. It is also a good chance to experience the lifestyle of Korean families. Local homestay hosts are selected according to five criteria, residential environment, guest room and cleanliness, mindset, service, and convenience. Reservations are available at www.visitkorea.or.kr. Question 6. Do you know anything about 1330? The 1330 Call Center provides information and services for most regions of Korea as well as interpretation services in English, Japanese, and Chinese. It provides you detailed travel-related information. If you have any concerns, it gives you reliable solutions as well. It's open throughout the year. This service is offered in four languages, English, Korean, Japanese, and Chinese. It is a public service run by the Korean Tourism Organization, so it's free. It is to help travelers have a great experience without worry during their stay in Korea. If you want to call, just dial 1330. Select the language and then use it. If you want to use it abroad, Skype call is also available. Question 7. What does LCC stand for? Could you list several AITA codes? There are six low-cost carriers in Korea. Air Busan, Estar Jet, Jeju Air, Jin Air, Tui Airlines, and Air Seoul. Air Busan is based in Busan, which is a subsidiary of Asiana Airlines. Estar Jet is a low-cost airline with headquarters in Gangseo-gu, Seoul. Jeju Air is based in Jeju City, Jeju-do, which provides domestic services between Jeju and mainland Korea. Jin Air's first flight was in July 2008. Tui Way Airlines is based in Hongsu-dong, Seoul. It was founded on August 2010. Air Seoul is a subsidiary of Asiana Airlines. The airline is based at Incheon Airport. It launched its service on the 11th of July 2016. Air Seoul initially operated domestic flights before spreading internationally in October 2016. Question 8. Tell me about FAM tour, sustainable tourism, ecotourism, dark tourism, and incentive tour. FAM tour is short for familiarization tour. FAM tour is short for familiarization tour. It is a tour that is designated for travel agents and journalists. Through the FAM tour, new travel programs and products are expected to be promoted when the guests go back to their workplaces. For example, I saw a news article that mentioned that the Korean government invited Chinese journalists to Jeju Island to promote the island to tourists. Before selling the tour products, the agents or government can try it out in advance and get feedback from the guests before releasing the final product. Sustainable tourism. Sustainable tourism is about visiting tourist spots which do not negatively affect the environment, economy, and society. It ensures the tourists have a meaningful experience by raising their awareness to promote sustainable tourism. It also encourages people to minimize the impact on the environment and local culture. For sustainability, we need to keep a balance between development and environmental issues. Plus, local people need to have the opportunity to be part of tourism for the social equality that brings financial benefits to the residents. As people realize this, the concepts of green tourism, ecotourism, and fair tourism has emerged. Ecotourism. 
Ecotourism is participating in environmentally responsible tours in which travelers can realize the importance of the environment. Tourism can possibly damage nature, but ecotourism aims to protect it as much as possible and promote conservation. It also tries to minimize the negative effect that tourism can cause to the environment. For example, the number of daily visitors who can access Huan of Tangdokgung is restricted to protect the palace. At the peak of Jirisan, Nogodan, you are not allowed to eat anything for environmental reasons. Also, the Jeju Ole Trail and the Tangyong Upo wetlands are also great examples of ecotourism. Dark tourism. The dark in dark tourism means a dark chapter of history. It is visiting a place where something terrible once happened. This kind of tourism is considered an important and meaningful concept as we can learn a wide range of lessons from reflecting upon past disasters. In Seoul, there is the war memorial in Yongsang City. We can see how tragic the Korean War was from each exhibition and sculpture. One more place I can recommend is Sodae Moon Prison History Hall near Independence Gate in Seoul. It was a prison built and used during the Japanese occupation. Many Koreans who resisted against the Japanese were arrested, tortured, and killed here. This prison shows how Koreans fought through a dreadful chapter of history with the hope of independence. Incentive Tourism Incentive tours are provided by a company for their employees as an incentive to help them engage with their work efficiently and successfully. A company provides incentive tours to excellent employees in the hope that their colleagues will work better after they come back. Employees can also get the chance to travel and bond with their coworkers. Incentive tours brings a large amount of profit to the tourism industry as most companies offer premium tour packages to reward their best employees. One example of an incentive tour to Korea is when a Chinese company sent their employees to Korea to have a giant chicken and beer party on Wolmi Island last year. Around 5,000 Chinese joined this tour and enjoyed the combination of chicken and beer, also known as chimek. Chimek is very popular both in Korea and abroad. Question 9. There are several slow cities in Korea. Do you know the meaning of slow city? Describe some slow cities in Korea. Slow city movement was started by mayors of small towns in Italy, and it is called city slow in Italian. As technology has developed rapidly, our life became fast, convenient, and easy. These qualities are not always good. People started missing the old days and had a clean, peaceful, natural, and relaxing environment. To be assigned as a slow city, the population of the city should be less than 50,000. There are currently 11 slow cities in Korea, which are Namyangju, Yesan, Chinan, Sangju, Tongsang, Hadong, Damyang, Donju, Jecheon, Wando, and Yongwol. The goals of the slow city movement are to make life better away from the urban lifestyle and improving the quality of life. Also, it is to protect the environment and develop unique qualities in each city. Question 10. Please explain about the Ramsar Convention. The Ramsar Convention is an international treaty to conserve and sustain wetlands in the world. This convention first started in 1971 in Ramsar, Iran. Every three years, a conference is held to make policies and to administer the work to implement its goals. Well-known wetlands in Korea are Suncheon Bay and Upo wetlands. Suncheon Bay is so famous for its vast reed field where we can see migratory birds there. So if you go to Suncheon Dolando, I highly recommend that you go to Suncheon Bay. Upo wetlands have numerous endangered and rare species. It also provides habitats for migratory birds, rare species like crane, geese, and turtles. Question 11. What types of travel businesses are there? There are three types of travel businesses in Korea. First is general travel business, which is for both Korean and foreign guests who travel to Korea or abroad. Second is domestic travel business for Koreans who only take domestic trips. Last is overseas travel business for Koreans who travel abroad. Question 12. What is inbound and outbound tours? Inbound tourism is travel business for foreign visitors. For example, if Chinese tourists visit Korea for a trip, then it is called inbound tour. But if Koreans visit China, then it is outbound tour. The two have a slight opposite meaning. Question 13. Could you tell us about Pyeongchang Olympics? 
Pyeongchang Olympics is an international multi-sport event that was held from the 9th to the 25th of February 2018 in Pyeongchang, Korea. Pyeongchang was selected as a host city by the International Olympics Community, ICC, in 2011. The mascots are Suhorang, a white tiger, and Bandabi, an Asiatic black bear. Suhorang represents trust, strength, and protection. Bandabi is a symbol of strong will and courage. The slogan is passion connected with the hopes of Korean technology connect traditional and modern generations. The main events in this Olympics are alpine skiing, cross-country skiing, figure skating, ice hockey, and ski jumping. Also, Paralympic Games was held for disabled athletes. Gangwon Province has a lot of tour spots such as Jongseon's paragliding and rail bike, the Hwaam Cave, Sodaksan Mountain, and so many eateries for foodies. Question 1. Where is your hometown? Please introduce some tourist areas in your hometown. My hometown is Pohang. It's located in the southern part of Korea, close to Busan, with beautiful seashores and fresh seafood. If you leave from Seoul, it will take around four and a half hours by bus. A famous seashore in Pohang is Yonggilman Sea. You can see splendid, lustrous, and brilliant sunrises. There is also one huge marine castle built there that is surrounded by the sea. Many people are fascinated by the view from the top of the castle. Moreover, it is very romantic to sit on the sea cafe terrace overlooking the sun rising with the aroma of your morning coffee. Second, Jukdo Traditional Market is one of my recommendations. It is famous for its seafood market, just like the Noryanjin Fish Market in Seoul. You can see various kinds of seafood while walking through the market. The last place I recommend is the Ousa Temple. You need to cross the swinging bridge over a big lake to arrive at the entrance of the temple. The bridge is around 90 meters long. Various kinds of trees and flowers grow around the temple, so you will feel at peace while crossing the bridge. These are the tourist spots I recommend in Pohang. Question 2. What is your opinion in regards to the Japanese military's sexual slavery issues? Comfort women are victims who were forced to do sexual slavery by the Japanese army during the colonial period. The exact number of girls who went into slavery is still debated, but it is assumed to be at least 400,000. Post-war compensation and reparation from Japan to Korea still remains unsolved and evoked severe anger among the Koreans because of Japan's inappropriate attitudes when addressing the issue. Korea and Japan had ministerial talk on the 28th of December 2015 and made an agreement to solve this issue. But it was not enough to compensate the sufferings the victim had to endure. Japan took action to make it up using financial compensation. Personally, without sincere apology and regretful attitudes to those victims who still suffer from their past, this negative tension between two countries will remain. Like Germany, Japan needs to reflect on what they did in the past and take action to create a friendly relationship in the future. I think, in the end, we both need to look towards the future to do the right thing. Korea and Japan can gain more from cooperation and I believe we can reach the ultimate solution that is good for both sides. Question 3. It is said that allowing a night tour of Gyeongbokgung Palace can possibly negatively affect the preservation of cultural properties. What do you think about this? Gyeongbokgung Palace opens for a night tour during certain periods of the year. It is so beautiful to see the illuminated palace with colorful lights shining upon it. The night tour session is popular for both locals and foreigners. We can reserve the tickets online, but it gets sold out very quickly because they only allow around 1,500 visitors a day. I heard that this night tour could make it difficult to preserve the Gyeongbokgung Palace. This is because large and powerful lights are shining all over the palace buildings. These lights can possibly cause damage and end up changing the color of the buildings. Some people argue that it's not a big issue, but if the buildings are exposed to powerful lights for a long time, it can be a big issue someday. Installing lights around the heritage sites also puts risk on preservation. If we only consider the preservation of cultural heritage, then this kind of night tour is not appropriate. But I think pleasure is also one crucial part of tourism. We should always make sure to balance these two values when making tour programs.
Question 4. What do you think are problems in Korean tourism? What can we do to make improvements? Tour programs are too focused on shopping. Shopping is an important part of making profits for companies, but too much shopping can destroy the quality of the tour and lower the visitor's satisfaction. Moreover, tour packages are identical in every travel agency. Korean language, Hallyu, K-pop, K-beauty, and many Korean cultural aspects are becoming popular worldwide, but tour programs do not seem to be following these trends. I think if we try to create tour programs with our unique history, people, culture, and society in mind, it would definitely help the growth of the industry. Question 5. Do you know about the medical tourism? What are current problems and solutions for medical tourism? Medical tourism is about traveling to other countries to get medical treatment. For example, my Australian friend came to Korea to get dental treatment because it is too expensive in Australia. Korea's dental treatment is highly developed and lower priced compared to his country. A case like this is called medical tourism, but the essence of medical tourism is fading away. Many medical institutes only focus on attracting overseas patients rather than developing tour content. This can result Korea gaining a bad reputation. Let me tell you several problems that current medical tourism has. There are not enough infrastructure like hotels and rehabilitation centers that are directly connected with hospitals. More infrastructures need to be built. Also, the lack of experts in this field cause a lot of communication problems. Medical tourism coordinators and translators who expertise in medical feats play a very crucial role in this field. Visa issuing for medical treatment is relatively easy than other visas and can be misused by illegal immigrants. Question 6. Let's say your tour is constantly delayed due to various reasons. Your guests become agitated. What would you do to solve this problem? No matter what caused the delay in the tour, I will explain the situation and what caused the constant delay before politely asking for my customer's understanding. I understand how unpleasant it is for them if that happens. So, as a tour guide, I can make it up for them by telling interesting stories about our lifestyle and cultures or playing simple games. I believe that meaningful conversations create high satisfaction and build happy memory between people. I will always try my best to make my customers feel at home on my tour. I won't let them waste time being bored and irritated on my tour. Question 7. Is there any way of eradicating dumping in tourism? Dumping in the tourism industry is caused by excessive competition among travel agencies. There are too many agencies in Korea and their tour package programs are very similar. Both government and travel companies often put in effort to increase quantitative growth. In the past, Korea was undeveloped, and for this reason, focusing on numbers was important in development. But now, I think it is time to focus on quality rather than quantity. We need to start thinking about how to create meaningful tour products to attract customers. Our government also needs to enhance and revise the criteria for selecting outstanding travel agencies. They should give incentives or fund travel agencies who have the highest customer satisfaction. I think this kind of structure can gradually eradicate dumping in the tourism industry. Question 8. What are the qualifications to be a tour guide? Why did you want to become a tour guide? And what steps did you take to become one? I think tour guides play a lot of roles in representing one's nation. First, the tour guide is a civil diplomat to tourists from all over the world. So, a tour guide should know correct information and be knowledgeable while becoming a bridge between foreign travelers and Korean culture. A tour guide always needs to study and learn new things. Those who are passionate about learning and experiencing new things are ready to be a qualified tour guide. Of course, they need to have tour guide certification issued by the government. To become a tour guide, I studied for one year to get a tour guide certification with my study mates. I took my foreign friends to tourist locations in Seoul and explained about what I studied about those places in English. I was so glad when they said, you're an awesome tour guide. After that, I conducted several mini tours with them. Also, I participated as a guest on the palace tour. There was a professional tour guide explaining the history of Gyeongbokgung to foreign travelers for two hours. Observing the tour was such a meaningful experience for me. Question nine. Let's say in your tour group, one customer suddenly gets injured. What would you do? Safety is very important when conducting a tour. If someone gets injured, I will immediately contact the consulate or the embassy. We will go to the medical center and get first aid for the wounded. 
In the hospital, I will help them contact their home country to talk to their families. Prevention is always the best solution. Accidents can happen all the time. To prevent an accident, it is one of the duties that a tour guide must keep in mind. I will always take care of all of my customers. Question 10. Your customers keep complaining while you are leading the tour. How can you deal with this problem? What's the best way to deal with customers' complaints? Even if it's a tiny complaint from the guest on my tour, I will try my best to listen carefully and politely explain to them how you will fix the issue if it's within my power. There can be various kinds of complaints such as hotel rooms, food, transportation, time delays, etc. Whatever it is, I would first focus on putting myself in the customer's shoes and try my best to communicate with them. I believe that communication can solve almost anything between people. It helps prevent problems from getting bigger. Question 11. There are situations on your tour that causes a constant delay of each tour event. Your guests are not happy with this. What would you do to solve this problem? I think this situation can frequently happen during a tour because Seoul's traffic is jam-packed day and night. The first thing I would do is give a sincere apology to my customers and explain what caused this delay. During the time that we spend on the bus to the next destination, I will talk more about culture, history, trends, lifestyle, travel tips, and anything I can amuse my customers so that they do not feel bored or irritated. But the most important thing is to not have this happen again. I will always prepare and check each time schedule before I conduct the tour. Question 12. How would you explain the Korean public subway system to your foreign friends? To take the Seoul Metro, you first need a ticket. The simplest way to buy a ticket is at the automated ticketing machines. There are two types of tickets. These tickets are one-time tickets and prepaid tickets. When purchasing your ticket, it is important to clearly state your destination. Prepaid tickets are called T-Money cards in Korea, and it is convenient if you are going to use public transportation many times. If you have a T-Money card, you can recharge the cards at the ticketing machine as much as you want. Subway fares are around 1,200 won, and its cost goes up a little bit depending on your destination. You can buy T-Money cards both at the ticket windows and at your local convenience stores such as GS25, 7-Eleven, or CU. T-Money cards are also available up to four transfers.